So I like to refer to habits as the compound interest of self-improvement. And what I mean is that the same way that money multiplies through compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them across time. And the challenging part of any compounding process is that the greatest returns are delayed. And so on day one or day 10 or day 30, you don't really have very much to show for your effort. The, the curve only takes off down the line uh, once you hit that hockey stick portion, once it really takes off. And this is exactly what it feels like to build a new habit. You know, like, what is the difference on day one of eating a salad for lunch or eating a burger and fries? Not a whole lot. Uh, you know, like your body looks the same in the mirror at the end of the night. The scale hasn't really changed. You don't really have anything to show for the effort that you're putting in. It's only two or five or 10 years later that you turn around and it's like, wow, those daily habits really do add up. And so um, in that way, ha building habits is kind of like this exponential curve. You, we think, oh, I'll put a little bit of work in and I'll get a little bit of results. So if I put a lot of work in, then I'll get a lot of results. But really, it's much more about time and letting it work for you. And just getting 1% better each day can count for something very significant in the long run. And so this is why I like to say, if you have good habits, good habits make time your ally. All you need is for time to work for you, for to let another day move by, and you continue to be put in a better and better position. But bad habits make time your enemy. Every day that clicks by, you're putting yourself a little bit further behind the eight ball. You're digging the hole a little bit deeper. And so uh, for all of those reasons, I think habits are what we could say the compound interest in self-improvement. Now, the next step of this is what you're mentioning with the plateau of latent potential. And the basic idea here is this, this challenge that I just mentioned where the returns are delayed. The, you know, you, you show up and um, you're not seeing the results that you want. And I like to summarize this by telling a, a brief little story, which is imagine that you walk into a room and it's cold. You can see your breath. Ice cube is sitting on the table and you start to heat the room up slowly. You know, you're going to say, um, do you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius? What would your audience get better? Celsius is better. Okay. All right. So let's say we're heating up this ice cube, right? And it's, I don't know, negative five degrees, something like that. You're heating it up negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. And the ice cube's still sitting there. You can still see your breath. But then you go from negative one to zero and it's a one degree shift, just like all those that came before it. But suddenly the ice cube melts, you hit this phase transition. And the process of improving is very much like that. The process of getting building better habits and getting results is very much like the process of heating up an ice cube. And you hear people say things like this all the time. They'll say like, um, I've been running for a month, but I can't see a change in my body, you know? And the, the, my argument is running for a month and complaining about not seeing the results you want or writing your book for eight months and not having it be finished yet. It's kind of like complaining about heating an ice cube from negative five to negative one degrees and they're not melting, you know, like the work was not being wasted. It's just being stored. And so you're kind of, you can view each iteration of your habit as building up this potential energy that can then be released later on. And um, I think about, there's this quote from the San Antonio Spurs NBA basketball teams. They've won five championships and they have this, this quote hanging in their locker room. And it says something to the effect of, when I feel like giving up, I think about the stone cutter who takes his hammer and bangs on the stone a hundred times without it showing a crack. And then on the 101st blow, it splits in two. And I know that it wasn't the 101st that did it, but all those that came before. And that is true for pretty much any habit, right? Like it's not the final sentence that writes the book. It's all those that came before. It's not the latest workout that gets your body fit. It's all those that came before. Um, and so the willingness to accept that 1% improvements make a meaningful difference, even if they don't show you anything on a given day, and then remaining committed to that in the long run. That, I think, is how you capture the power of compounding habits and of uh, letting 1% improvements work for you rather than against you.